Alright guys, so this is the little experiment that I've been doing on the uh, five pennies that I found on my last hunt that were really corroded. Um, I put the five that were the worst, I put them in different solutions here. Um, some of them were suggestions from y'all, some of them were suggestions that I found online. Um, and then one of them was just something that my husband and I wanted to try. So this first container here, this is salt and vinegar. The second one is extra virgin olive oil. Now, well the salt and vinegar was a suggestion from several of y'all, so I tried that one. The olive oil was a suggestion that I found online. It was specifically on a coin website. Um, and they had said when you find really old coins, like hundreds and thousands of years old, um, it's really easy to mess them up. And they had recommended soaking it in olive oil um, and that's supposed to help release the crud on it um, so I gave that one a try this one is coke zero so coca-cola um, a couple of y'all had given me the suggestions of soaking them in coke now I don't we don't have regular coke so the next best thing I have was coke zero um, this is the one that we tried just on our own um, it's sitting in a solution of it's called salt terminator and it's actually a solution that we use to clean our boat after we take it out. Um, it just completely dissolves the salt. It eats it away. And then this last one is hydrogen peroxide. Um, this one was a recommendation from a couple of y'all as well. So they've been sitting in here, um, let's see, for about four, uh, no, 50 hours, I think. Um, so about two and a half days they've been sitting in the solution. So I'm going to go ahead and take them out and see what they look like. So let me open up the first container. and It's going to be the salt and vinegar one. Okay, so this one, there was very noticeable crud sitting on the bottom. You can see it there. So I'm going to go ahead and take it out. So there's that. Now I'll post pictures, um, close-up pictures of it. This way you guys can see the difference. Um, now this one, like I'm rubbing it and I can feel some crud coming off right here. This penny was, I think, probably one of the worst ones. I mean, granted, they were all pretty bad, but there was like three of them that were really bad. Um, it's very, very thin. There's not much of this coin left. And you can even see right here where it's missing chunks on it. Um, so I'll post pictures so you guys can see the before and after comparisons. Honestly, this one is by far the, I don't know, I guess the, the best one so far in regards to the amount of crud that came off. Um, so I was, I was kind of surprised actually the difference that it made between vinegar and then vinegar with salt so that was really interesting um, yeah okay so let me open up the next one okay so now this is the olive oil one um, this one I did not see any difference at all there's no crud sitting on the bottom um, the penny didn't change colors at all nothing so again, this is the recommendation that I found on a website, a coin website. And I was thinking about it and I was wondering if maybe that particular recommendation was for coins that have been sitting in the ground for a couple of hundred or thousand years, not coins that have been sitting in the ocean for however many years. Um, so this one, <clears throat> this one, like I said, it, there's no difference at all except now this Penny is like extra moisturized, I guess. Um, so I'll post close up pictures of this one. This method did not work for my penny that was sitting in the ocean. So if you had ever heard about that cleaning method, um, it doesn't seem to work for pennies from the ocean. So yeah. <laughs> Alright, so the next one is the Coke Zero one. So let me go ahead and open that one. Alright guys, so this is the coin, the penny that's been soaking in Coke Zero. I'm pretty sure this one hasn't done 
anything different. Yeah. So that one pretty much looks exactly the same. And I'll take pictures and show these after this. So, yeah, I don't think that one. There's not even any grit in the bottom of this dish. Yeah. Alright, so the next one is Salt Terminator. And I'll rinse these off before I take pictures, but again, this one looks exactly the same also. Now, this was just an experiment. Um, we didn't know if it would do anything, because it's not salt that's built up on there, but it's, um, you know, just kind of mineralized crud. All right, and then the last one is hydrogen peroxide, and I'll dip my fingers in the coke to get the salt terminator out before I put them in the hydrogen peroxide. Now this one, this one looks the same too, honestly. Maybe a little bit darker? I don't know, I'll have to look at the before pictures and compare it. Yeah, so there's those three, and then these were the first two. This was the um, salt and vinegar, and then this one was the olive oil. So out of these five coins and the different solutions, honestly, the salt and vinegar worked the best, um, in my opinion. Even though, like this particular penny, the, um, the plates on both sides are pretty much gone. So this here... I mean, you can see how thin that is. This is just the the metal that's in the middle, which I'm not sure what kind of metal it is, but that's that. So, yeah, so what I did was I actually took um, coins, the rest of the coins that I found, and I've been running them through my Sonic Cleaner. Um, now, originally what I did was I put all of the coins in there together. So I put everything in there, but the pennies started turning all the other coins this same coppery color. Um, so what I did was I just put all the quarters, nickels, and dimes in here by themselves, and the copper color came off, thankfully. Um, so now the solution in here, this is actually vinegar and salt in here, and it really cleaned the coins up fantastically. Um, there's still a dime over here in the corner that's still kind of cruddy, but I've run them through this Sonic Cleaner several times, and I don't think it's going to come off anymore. So, yeah, I'll have to rinse these off and get dates off of them, but I'm pretty sure none of them are older than 1965. Um, and then I'll probably run the pennies through again, just because they're still kind of cruddy a little bit. But um, for the most part, I mean, they came out really good. I mean, the salt and vinegar does a fantastic job. Yeah, and we tried the electrolysis on these five pennies over here, and they were so cruddy. Like, this penny here is just so cruddy that the clips couldn't get a good, um, I don't know, they couldn't make a good connection with the coins. So when we plugged it in, the clip itself started bubbling, not the coin. And no matter how we tried to reposition the clip, um, it just wasn't making a good enough connection for the electrolysis to work, period. Now we did do it on one of these quarters. I don't remember which one, but um, it wasn't nearly as cruddy as the pennies. And it, it started working. It started cleaning the quarter up really well. And honestly, it was probably that quarter right there because that one looks the best out of the other ones that are in here. So, yeah, in my opinion, using pennies, um, the best way to clean it is the salt and vinegar um, mixture. And you could even do salt and vinegar in a sonic cleaner mixture. But um, other than that, these other experimental juices or liquids that we tried, they did absolutely nothing. So, yeah, so that's my take on it. <laughs> Alright guys, so here's a shot of all the coins that I cleaned so far using the um, salt and vinegar mixture in my Sonic Cleaner. Um, and they look 
fairly good. There's still some here that have crud on them. Like this quarter is still pretty cruddy, but um, it's you know it's already opened up on the side. Uh, well, actually, I think all of these already opened up on the side, so the salt water is already you know destroying them. So I don't know really how much more I could get this to come off, honestly. Um, and this is after several rounds in the Sonic Cleaner with the salt and vinegar solution. So they came out, you know, relatively good. The salt and vinegar definitely affects the, the way the coin looks. So let me pull out, um, well this one's not really good, but it's got like a shine to it just, you know, from how the coin was made, but after the salt and vinegar, there's no shine, um, and that's like that for all of the coins, so like, the nickels actually didn't get torn up in the salt water as bad as the other ones, these didn't open up on the side, so I think nickels are made differently than the quarters and dimes and pennies, but um, even the nickel, there's no shine to it like there is with this dime. See, you can see it a little bit, like right there. Um, and definitely on the newer coins. So like here's this dime. This one's really new. Look at that shine. Very nice, but none of these other ones have that shine. So the salt and vinegar definitely affects that. But, I mean, it does get the crud off of it enough for you to be able to pull dates off of the coins. Um, I don't know that you could actually spend these. I don't know if a machine would take it. Because I think some machines go off of weight. And if it's already being eaten away, um, the edges and the inside, obviously the coin's not going to weigh what it's supposed to weigh. So, yeah. But this is it so far. I still have a, um, a group of pennies to clean. And the two nickels, I had two nickels that were really cruddy um, that I had sitting in the salt and vinegar solution. And some of the crud came off, but not nearly enough. So I'm going to mix up a new solution and clean that. But this is it, so I wanted to show you guys. Now, I know another good way to clean coins is the rock tumbler, which I didn't have. I don't have, so I didn't do that with this particular cleaning experiment. But maybe sometime in the future I will. So, yeah, so um, I'll give that a try. I need to find some more coins and get a rock tumbler and then try it. But I just wanted to show y'all. Um, and then another thing, if you're looking for information for the, the gathering or the get-together on May 6th, head over to my Facebook page because I put a little video out there with some information. So um, definitely check out my Facebook page if you're planning on coming to the uh, little get-together Friday, May 6th. And other than that, leave me any questions or comments you have. Make sure to check me out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And yeah, I guess I will see you guys later.